Huawei Media Network. Bringing to you the most relevant content across all platforms. Business. Legal. Politics. Health. Lifestyle. And entertainment. Your source for all the news and updates in the greater Houston community from Texas and all over the world. Get informed and empowered with LawWin Media Network. The following program is produced by Law & Media Network. The views and opinions expressed in this program are solely those of the individuals appearing on the show and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Law & Media Network, its affiliates, sponsors, or partners. The content provided in this program is intended for informational and entertainment purposes only. Law & Media Network does not guarantee the accuracy, completeness, or timeliness of the information. Prepare for an emotional roller coaster as you explore our Be Bold episode clips. Immerse yourself in the most unforgettable moments and enjoy hearty laughs with our collection of bloopers and highlights. Be Bold Why Not? Highlights and Bloopers. Part 2. For tonight, we're going to be talking about these three particular laws. The first one is the law of design. So what does the law of design mean? Well, the law of design simply states that to maximize our growth, we have to actually develop some strategies. That's a big word. What about, right? Atala, strategies. We're getting a little bit of... Think about, you know, like, <laughs> not, not, not just the steps. I think we have to be very creative with this law, you know, because... It's practically about also putting our ideas, you know, our imagination, our willpower, uh, our really true desire to make things happen. I mean, that idea, it cannot be just an idea. It has to be executed, right? Mm -hmm. And again, I think also is when we start really taking uh, action. More than anything else to me, it's, it's more about also taking action. To move forward from an idea, we must plan. I think that uh, visualize, but at the same time, manifesting in the action to make it happen. Yeah, that is correct. Because it's kind of like when you're trying to build your house, right? You don't just like splatter everything there but you have to have like a blueprint right you you hire an architect and then you hire a designer and things like those it's like having a plan so that's basically what we should be aiming at when we want to grow more in our personal you know in personal life and in life life in general so we have to have a plan and for us to have that, you have, we have to have we have to develop, like I said, a blueprint or a roadmap or a dream board or imagination, whatever it is that will help you execute your plan, right? So I think that's basically what it is because strategies. If we have the strategies and the plan, then we can ex create systems. And then these systems will help us to actually navigate through whatever we are aiming at. I love the next law. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. like, a, that one is one of my favorites, actually. And this is going to be the love of pain. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you why. I think that pain uh, is something that actually is an opportunity for everybody to grow. That's what I see. I don't believe that pain should be uh, extended in life. I don't believe so. And doesn't have to be turned into suffering. However, pain is an opportunity. It's like a door. We open a door for growth, for learning, for stretching, right? 
And I do believe that, that life in any transition, anyone, give us that opportunity. It's more about what is the relationship that I have with pain when something happened, the interpretation that I give into that uh, situation, but also I have the opportunity to select what do I want to learn, right? How can I turn this situation in my favor? So to me, it's a very powerful law. What about, what do you think about this law, MJ? Yes, absolutely. You're correct, Atala. The law of pain is basically, basically saying that for us to grow even better, we try to change or make the bad experiences into good ones. So our personal growth, it's like when they say the pain or the struggles that we go through actually get us closer to knowing who we are. Because it's yes. how, how we manage those bad experiences can help us grow exponentially. Another thing that really matter when we are trying to, you know, grow personally and more and like at a bigger level is we have to always remember the golden rule because the golden rule speak about people because people matter. Our relationships, that's what matter. Like that's why we have to have that vertical relationship, our relationship with God, and then our horizontal relationship. It's our relationship with other people. And this is where the golden rule applies because people matter. I couldn't imagine my life living in this world by myself. No man is an island, right? We are part of this big creation and that we have to really, you know, love each other, care for each other, and just fight each other. Passionate about something, then it's easier for you to actually talk about it. It's easier for you to actually move people to believe it because you are you believe it. You're able to believe in, in your brother, in your service, in your message, you know, mm -hmm. your purpose in life, for example. So when you are truly own those words, but also you believe to your, I mean, to really not just a believing with not feeling, you know, there are two things here. Once you believe in your product, in your service, in your message, in your purpose, you even connect to those emotions and you vibrate at a very high level of energy. When you just say it, but you don't feel it, people cannot feel it either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, I mean, if you're not passionate about anything, if you don't believe in anything, if you don't believe in yourself, then who would believe you? Yeah, when you're having fun. So, so let's talk a little bit about this load. So stretch is always, always from inside out. What do you think about that? That's true, because you have to have that inner desire to actually stretch out and reach your full potential and set your goal. You have to have that desire. That's why it comes from inside. And then if you start from within, then you spread it out. It doesn't come from outside. The external forces won't make you stretch. It, it has to come from you. Like a yeah. consciousness, has, you know, yeah. you have to have this kind of waking moment to say, mm -hmm. I want something more. I'm not mm -hmm. going to go and get it. So at the moment that you make a decision on a conscious level, yeah. that's going to start the stretch. And also it's going to lead you to change, of course. And that's going to lead you to be a little bit maybe, you know, uh, not just outside of your comfort zone, but also it will lead you to maybe to the right connections, mm -hmm. to the right atmospheres, to the right business, because you are going outside of your comfort zone. So things are going to start looking different, if you think about yeah, it. Yes, that is right. Because... People can't make you change. It has to come mm -hmm. from you. And then if you do that, then it will become a lifestyle. Definitely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Once you keep doing it and practicing the stretching power, the power of stretching, then it becomes a lifestyle. Now we grow easier and better. And that's how it is. So remember, stretching comes from inside, not outside. 
All right. <laughs> and you know what? You made me think about something else. This is a very important law because think about it. We start really teaching, not just, mm -hmm. you know, like applying it to our lives. If our kids or teenagers, they start looking at, oh, you know, this is an opportunity for me to get out of my comfort zone, mm -hmm. to become better mm -hmm. as a person, as a human being, as a student, as a son, as a mother, as an employee or business partner or whatever it is. What a great opportunity that we all have to embrace this love in our lives. Oh, yes, that's very true. I can set my daughter as an example. You know, I, I don't know, but that girl, she never fails to amaze me, amaze us, because she's so busy. Like, she's a dancer, she's a performer, she's a singer and all that, and she's in high school. But on top of that, she wants to graduate with an associate degree in high school. Wow. So even though she's already so busy and she's doing a lot of things, She's stretching herself to do more by enrolling in dual credit courses or advanced placement courses. So she gets her college degree associates in high school. But think about it. Yeah. You just start in the early age. Think mm -hmm. about how it's going to be your life. You know, yes. like that you create a lifestyle. So yeah. it's going to ex actually exponentially, you know, mm -hmm. take you faster where is your destination, I believe. Yes. So we really should really embrace this low and really take it like a, a very healthy habit. <laughs> That's right. And we develop habits, they say, in like 21 days. So if we make it a habit to stretch and really do more and more and more, then it becomes a habit and it becomes a lifestyle. So that's the law of the rubber band. Remember, for <laughs> nutrition, for, you know, in your, in your, I mean, even if you want to start exercising, you know, just waking up early in the morning or start a business or maybe, you know, you have a better relationship within yourself. Mm -hmm. Whatever is some, whatever is that through this side that you want, mm -hmm. just welcome this love into your life. That's what I can say. Yes. Me, I think, um, because recently, you know, I've been trying to lose weight. So I've given up eating. <laughs> No, but I mean, honestly, I'm doing intermediate fasting. So you know how people are so used to eating three meals a day plus snacks in between, right? I've given up some of that. Now I only eat probably two good meals a day. I've done like 16 to 22 hour fasting. So mm -hmm. for me to achieve what I want and to, to lose that weight to become healthier, I've given up eating part of my, you know, that I, are you giving up yeah. or are you choosing wisely? Yeah, and, you're eating too. Mm -hmm. and I'm picking, yeah, of course, I have to eat healthier too. So sometimes we just have even those little things or simple things that we can do to give up so we can achieve our goal or we can reach, you know, our full, full potential when we have to do it. And I kind of have, as you said, sometimes we have so many things that we're doing and our energy is so spread out so in that case we may achieve one thing little thing but it's not significant That's enough right. mm -hmm. it's not significant enough that will actually improve ourselves so as you have said earlier if you give up on some things and focus more on the you know on your actual priorities then your energy is also more focused on that thing and you can achieve more you can go up more and which is the law of trade-offs <laughs> okay i like that one the trade-offs yeah well the law of trade-offs pretty much says that we have to give up something right if to go to up achieve something yeah else. For us to go up the ladder, sometimes we have to give up some things in life. Because as we go up, there are things that are pulling us down because the baggage is just so heavy. It's, it's amazing what you yes. just said because yes. think about for a moment, you know, like uh, sometimes we want to achieve something, but mm -hmm. in order for us to be able to go to the next level, we will have to give up maybe spending more time with friends, you know, maybe going out for dinner, spending a lot of money in dinner, maybe just kind of become more disciplined, more mm -hmm. organized, you name it. So yeah. we have to always, it's a trade-off. So it is, it is. I have to give up watching my Korean drama. <laughs> okay, that's one thing interesting. Okay, so what, what does MJ like to do on her, on her spare time? <laughs> what 
she <laughs> just said it. I just said it. Yeah, that's true. And sometimes we just want to to do so many things at the same time, and then we lose focus, and then we we tend to over over stretch ourselves, and that's when we can actually grasp. I said we have too heavy baggage that and we're, we're not, carrying. We're not using our yeah. energy wisely mm -hmm. because again, everything's energy. You mm -hmm. know, every activity that we're doing, every conversation that we're having. Every action that we're taking, every thought, every word, plus energy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to come to the conclusion, mm -hmm. say, what is really my top priority? Mm -hmm. That it will take me to the next level. Mm -hmm. And be very focused and develop that mindset. Go forward every single day, work in that main goal. And that will actually change your mindset, definitely. But also you're going to start seeing more... Uh, I mean, a better outcome. You're going to start really feeling more confident because you're moving forward with grace, with that kind of, you know, like uh, energy, like focus. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to always decide what do I need to give up in order uh -huh. to achieve something bigger in my life. Whenever you're picking your mentor or trying to decide which way to go, have someone that you actually align your values with. Because that's very that's very that's important. Because it has to be someone that had made an impact on other people's lives the way that you want to make an impact on others. Yes, I think that you have to yes. like the, the life story, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the lives. I mean, how they have grown, you know, their challenges, how they evolve over the years. What mm -hmm. are they doing in, in, in the present moment? But also their values is crucial because that's going to give you a lot of clarity also. When you are you know, uh, making decisions in life and you have this, I mean, very uh, um, clear values, mm -hmm. it's easy to actually uh, make any decision. It's faster, it's easier. And if that mentor has also the same values, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to yes. be natural, the connection. Oh, yes, yes. And you work together better because you believe in the mm -hmm. same, you have the same beliefs, you have the same principles, your stories kind of are like the same and like you want to do make a positive impact in the same way so it's important alignment of values is very important when you're looking for someone to mentor you that's why they say a real friend or a true friend actually tells you the truth even if they tell you what they tell you hurts if it's the truth and if it's gonna help you improve and become better and and grow, then that's better than having someone who just want to praise you and not want to hurt your feelings, but then you're not, you're not growing or you're not going any further yes. in your life because nobody's telling you the real truth. Nobody's actually telling you that you need to grow on this area of your life. And that's not helping. So we ha if you want a mentor that's honest and truthful and who cares, then we have to be that mentor to our friends and family as yes. well. It's, that's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's uh, something that is going to have an impact, whatever, mm -hmm. the, whatever answer you're going to be giving to somebody, mm -hmm. because most probably I have been mentored some people and I have to be very straightforward, you know, not pamper mm -hmm. them, but be honest. Mm -hmm. Love expansion, yeah, simply means that growth increases our capacity, right? That's why it says expansion. So if we're like this, we're just in a box and we don't want to get out of that box, then we are so limited. But then we have to get out of that box. Comfort zone. Yeah, mm -hmm. out of the comfort zone. We have to get out of that and expand our like that, yeah, expand our capacity. Okay, so that's very important. Sometimes we have this mindset of like, oh, I can't do it. But this yeah. is like very, yeah. you know, like the more that you repeat yourself, think about it. How many times we, we our inner dialogue is like, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. well, I'm so afraid. Mm -hmm. Or I don't have the uh, knowledge or the skills. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the knowledge, you can always learn something else, right? Mm -hmm. You're expanding. You are breaking your own limited, limited beliefs. You are going forward. You are actually being brave and be bold because it's so many things in life that we can achieve. But sometimes we need to face that fear. Yeah, and we have to stop thinking that we can't. But rather, we should ask ourselves, how can we do it? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we have to be resourceful. As you have said, we can always find a way to do things. That's why it's so easy now to do to find a way to do things. Like you can just watch on YouTube, DIYs. There's a lot of resources out there that will teach you how to actually do some a certain thing. Contribution. Definitely. Yeah, we can share or contribute or be part of a bigger purpose in this world. Like if you contribute your time, talent, resources, gifts, gifts, experiences, share your experiences, your stories. Yeah, even your story. I mean, you never know who's going to be impacted with your story. I think it's, I was talking also today, you know, and I was sharing that the the stories that we all have are super powerful Mm -hmm. and that we should be great to to share, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. it comes, has to come from vulnerability, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because there's so much, uh, uh, I think, experiences that we all have in, in our lives that we don't even share with people because we are afraid about, you know, judgment and maybe about being vulnerable. But that's the beauty of life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we should never be scared to, to share what we have and to actually make an impact with, you know, to other people, because that is why we are here. We, as a very famous saying goes, no one, no man is an island. So if you are able to contribute to your community, then you're making a very, you know, positive. Contribution. Yes. Or yes. just community groups, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. they are yeah, it doesn't mean like yes. a community at large, just, you just have your family, you have your friends. Yes. Open your mind, you know, that, I mean, see the opportunities that they are right there because you never know, actually, by just contributing, volunteering, you can also open many doors. People will, most probably you will have like a divine connection. You never know. Yeah. What is estate and what do we, why do we plan it? <laughs> What is estate planning? But no, you know, actually, good question. I love that question. What is estate and why do we plan for that? You say estate, we're talking about what, what comes into your mind. Mine is like land and uh, property, houses. Yes, you're right. Assets. You know, um, that's your estate. That's why when somebody passed away, we settled the estate. That's what we do when we do probate. We settle the estate because the estate is what you left for your loved ones. So while you're alive, you're accumulating this estate. Why we say estate planning? Why? Mm -hmm. Well, because mainly the reason why you're doing the planning is you're thinking about what will happen when you pass away, most likely, right? I mean, we all pass away someday. It's just a matter of when. Hopefully not too soon because we want to enjoy it. Drive safe, eat healthy, go to the gym. embrace gratitude in your life and Jay yeah well for me I think I have been grateful all my life you know good in good and bad times I think I have practiced gratitude because I believe in the power of gratitude but first off I just want to mention you know very significant people in my life that have brought me to where I am today and I am always going to be grateful for them. I am forever ever grateful for these people like our relatives, my relatives in California, you know, they they helped me through my education and all. I have relatives in the Philippines that have been helping me. Of course, my my brothers and sisters, my siblings, they've been my inspiration, my parents and now my family, because they serve as my inspiration. So in all the challenges that I've gone through my life, I always try to practice gratitude, because I know that all these challenges have made me a stronger person. What about you, Atala? What are the, what oh are the things really that you are I'm most grateful of? I'm always grateful to God first, because to me, mm-hmm. every day is a gift. It's a gift, like, allow me to wake up to to breathe, you know, to feel happy, to, to know that I have a purpose on a daily basis, that I want to be able to share with somebody, you know, maybe my my purpose, but more than anything else, 
just by being there, present, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm very grateful for my parents, for everything that they taught me, for helping me to see life with different eyes, for the resilience, mm -hmm. for the love, of course, my family, my son, who encouraged mm -hmm. me, you know. Like, so many people, I think that on daily basis, I always find something to be grateful for. And I always mm -hmm. look for the complicity in life, the little things that become the big things in my life. Mm -hmm. so, so many things, you know, many, many things. Yeah, me too. I mean, I cannot even enumerate all the things I'm grateful for. And you're right. When we wake up in the morning, just having or being able to breathe fresh air and being able to, you know, every second of the day, every minute, we are grateful because we're here. We're alive and kicking. And That's we are healthy. We have family and friends that love us. We have strong relationships there's so many things that we can be grateful for and it just sets the tone and it sets your day because if you are not grateful with what's going on in your life you'll never be content with what life can bring you and actually there's yeah you know like um when i think about people you know like um they share you know what is going on in their lives i always start to ask them like, what is going on well in your life and look mm -hmm. at the little you know, look at the little, the little things that in reality we should never ignore. You know, mm -hmm. just the fact that say, the fact that you can move, the, the fact that you mm -hmm. can breathe, that you can that you can even feel pain because that means that you are alive, right? Mm -hmm. The fact that we have our friends and sometimes we just take it for granted, but we should never take it for granted. We should always, you know, like be grateful for the opportunities that we have because we can create our day on daily mm -hmm. basis. And I do believe that we always can find something, truly something to be grateful for. That's right. And actually, there are a lot of health benefits of being mm -hmm. grateful. You know, there are there are studies out there, there are articles out there that actually proves that gratitude actually enhances our physical, mental, and emotional health. And mm -hmm. one of which, yeah like it helps reduce depression. There are studies right there that the higher is your gratitude score, the lower is your depression. You know, it helps because if you're grateful of everything, even the little things in your life, you are you tend to have more joy. So you appreciate things. As you say before, improves your well-being, improves mm -hmm. I mean, your immune system. Right? Yeah, and yeah. Allow you to sleep better in night. Yes, it, it, yes, so and it's good. also it also is hard I and mean, good for the heart. Because there's there are studies out there too that proves that it can help actually reduce your diastolic blood pressure. If you're always grateful, it's healthy for your heart. So there's a lot of benefits, as you said. I mean, improves sleep, relieves stress. Decreases Let's anxiety. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. So why don't we just this and it's free. You don't have to pay for it. <laughs> right? And you know the, there is no negative side effects. You just think about it, you know? Yeah. This is yeah. like the best the best skill you want to call that you can take every single day. Mm -hmm. No side effects. Just yeah. positive, you know, outcomes in your life. So what should mm -hmm. you know embrace even more this great feeling of being grateful? Yes, yes, that's very true. And there's a lot of health benefits out there. And if only people will realize that, then it makes life better. If, but, you know, it's, it's no perfect world. There are those people that it's hard for them to practice gratitude. It's maybe because they never did it. Like, it, it's hard for them because they never started early. And it's, it's a practice. Like it, it becomes a habit, just like what you said. It becomes a muscle. And they say this, it is a common question. It's hard to forgive. They say, what what's the difference between forgiving and forgetting? I mean, it's it's totally different, right? You can forgive. You don't doesn't have to mean that you have to forget, right? Because you can forgive without forgetting. Of course, whatever memories or whatever we've done in the past it's always going to be there it's in our memory but you you don't forget it but you can forgive you can I'm, forgive I'm, I'm, and can so we have a comment from our one of our viewers so we're just going to read it for now before we move on so the comment actually it's a question 
says forgiving is one thing, but what if you are the one asking for forgiveness and someone refuses to forgive you? What do you think, Atala? At the moment that you decide, you know, that you last asking for forgiveness, where you are doing already your part. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to be uh, feeling, you know, that terrible because the other person maybe is not aware of or is not his timing to forgive, right? But as soon as you decide to make the first step, even in your heart, in your mind, that's good enough. You yes. don't have to wait until the other person say, yes, I forgive you. Mm -hmm. It may happen, it may not happen, but you are moving forward to your liberation, which mm -hmm. is very important. That's so correct. So well done. <laughs> yes, kudos. If That's you do right. that, yes, you give yourself a pat in the back because now you've accepted. Because, you know, if just accepting that you have done wrong to someone, that takes a lot of courage. That's, That's boldness. So, so now you have done your part, then let that person you know, accept it when they're ready. So we're going to talk about the health benefits and a lot of other benefits of forgiving. As, as I was sharing earlier when, you know, before we took a break about this person that I shared my own experience and lo and behold, she realized that she has to forgive. See, that is one benefit. You're actually making an impact on someone's lives when you're someone's life when you're doing that. I said lives because it's like <laughs> we have multiple lives sometimes, just like the cat. They say that the cat has nine lives. <laughs> anyway, so we believe it's important to to really embrace forgiveness. Yeah, and it's it's just a win-win situation. You free yourself from any pain, hurt, frustrations. You free all of that, and you gain all the positive benefits in your health, your mental, emotional, and physical health. And then it improves your self-esteem. You feel good about yourself. And then people will show that. It will reflect the way you talk to people, the way you deal with people. Your energy. Yes, your also. energy. Mm -hmm. So you are able to accomplish more, become more creative. You become more clear. You have to. Yes. Productivity is important. But many mm -hmm. times we are investing our energy in the wrong way mm -hmm. when you decide to forgive i can guarantee you your energy is going to be higher but also your productivity mm -hmm. which i think is is like a, you know like doing more and achieving more in less time that's right so and as again we would like to stress <laughs> we you have to forgive yourself too forgive yourself first because that's when you're going to feel the benefits and if you experience that yourself, and if you feel good about it, then imagine how you want that other people to experience that and, as and well. Also, for example, that I mean, create um, a better relationship, of course, with yourself. But you're going to perform better in any area of your life. Mm -hmm. I believe, like you know, when I make a mistake, of course, you know, I, I do this kind of self evaluation. But honestly, I learned to don't step stay. So much on that feeling because again it doesn't serve me and by knowing that they i can identify my errors my mistakes but i will analyze them even with compassion because mm -hmm. in that way it will help me to move forward to my next you know activity or destination whatever it or is. go or yeah go, but yeah no with always no with self-criticism because it doesn't empower anybody. That's right. You know, I, I, I feel that sometimes. And because, you know, every day we make little mistakes and we, have, we may have done bigger mistakes. And if we dwell on them, we tend to get stuck. We're just stuck. We can't move because we are not letting go of whatever that baggage that you have. It feels so heavy. And I've experienced that myself because I have made mistakes too and they are still in my mind I still remember them that that should not stop you from you know moving forward that's why if you forgive yourself that's when you actually are ready to take the next step and it's it takes a lot of courage to move and take a first step but it starts from forgiving yourself from whatever you've done in the past forgiving others for whatever they've done to you so you can move on 
and then you will feel that things will fall into place. That's why I am a product. I am a product of people's kindness because they have helped us monetarily and everything. But it's not just by finances. I mean, you can extend kindness by contributing or giving your talent. Like, you know, or even listening sometimes. Yeah. How many times we have this desire of being heard, you know? Maybe something happened to you and you just call somebody and that person is available. That's also she's showing or he's showing kindness, right? Yes, like Besides being, that. yes, being there for someone, like offering a shoulder to cry on, offering an ear to listen to, offering your time, you know, to to take care of someone and just even just a simple smile that can brighten up someone's day. I mean, even those little acts of kindness can make a big difference. And we know we have a lot of famous people out there that really do big, you know, big acts of kindness. And we actually have some few slides that we're going to show them just to share how the philanthropists, you know, we have a lot of philanthropists, the billionaires, right? <laughs> so they they give, they donate, they have foundations, they create like cause to support. So we have a lot of example of those people and um, we are going to show them to you. Right? So let's show some, some slides. Look at that. Warren Buffett. Yes, right? Atala, imagine if we have those <laughs> Bill Gates and Melinda. You know what, you know what the beauty is like, a, even though, you know, everybody has different kind of opportunity to show kindness, I do believe in the power of doing it on a daily basis. And maybe it's like a, you could say maybe two, three, four, five people, but that's a good enough number of people that can also learn from you and feel motivated to do it to other people. So I, mm -hmm. I just think that we should take the opportunity, you know, and, and just kind of really show kindness on daily basis because definitely change our life, you know, and improve our well-being, period. So why not doing something that is going to be beneficial for us and for the world as well? That's correct. And we're just showing this billionaires, philanthropists. There are a lot more out there. And, you know, that's the way of their way of really sharing their blessings. They just create foundations. And as Atala had said, it doesn't have to be big. Whatever giving or kindness act that you do, it doesn't have to be big. Even the small things matter. And, you know, if you can give in small scales, then you'll be able to give in bigger scales. You can sleep well at night when you know that you've done something for someone. And especially if you did it, you know, voluntarily, that they didn't have to ask for it. So kindness is also like voluntary. You're not forced to do anything, right? You're, we're not forcing you or it, it's out of compassion. Kindness is out of compassion, right? So I like what you say too, uh -huh. and because it actually helps us a lot, you know, in our uh, immune system to remember that it, it is going to lower our cortisol levels, going to release the stress as well. So it's going to actually help us to, as you say, sleep sleep better at night for sure. So mm -hmm. there are some things that it's easy to do it. I believe it's it's really about taking the initiative to do it. It's like when you start really create a new habit mm -hmm. and then you start feeling comfortable and more and more because it's a humble habit, actually. Yes, and okay, Lysel shared her thought. She says, be kind to myself when I commit a mistake. I love you know that. what that's very too. Yes, I love, I love that too. Yeah. I love that too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for sharing because it's true. I think that you touched a very important point, you know, many times we're so cruel with ourselves and mm -hmm. we shouldn't because it's always going to take away energy, mm -hmm. always. 
it never is going to help us, but it actually will, uh, you know, like uh, make us feel uh, worse or inferior, and it's it's gonna it's gonna be more difficult to perform in any area when we are no self with I mean kind with ourselves. Yes, and yeah, give yourself some grace because we all we all make mistakes. Nobody is perfect. So if you make a mistake, that's okay. That's okay. And remember, you know, committing mistakes is one way to learn because there's nobody in this world that has ever, ever done life or lived life without mistakes, right? So we all right. do. So give yourself some grace. If you make a mistake, it's okay. The more impo the important thing is we learn from it and we become better. It's through mistakes that make us what we are. I mean, because if you don't make a mistake, I mean, there's no fun in life, right? Sometimes. And anyways, I think we got to get into the topic now, right? right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. What do you think is the topic tonight, Christian? Uh, I think you already kind of mentioned it earlier. I think it involves like waiting and like enduring, like suffering and stuff like that. We were also talking about this back backstage, like online backstage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're talking about the power of. Da -da 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 -da. Let's wait, wait, wait. We gotta wait. Come on, viewers, you have to be to be patient. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, the power of patience. What can you say about patience, Christian? What do you, yeah, what do you uh, think? Well, uh, I think you, you, always, you always see them in hospitals. They come in for different reasons. Some of them are hurting. Some of them have appointments. Some of them are just there for x-rays. So, yeah, you know, there's different kinds of them. Uh, some of them uh, have broken bones. Some of them have, like, <laughs> worse stuff happening to them. That's what we're talking about this week, right? <laughs> You know what? I really love you, Christian, when you go. It's because you're like so much fun. You got a natural humor. Could you believe this guy has natural humor? So I don't know what her his girlfriend is waiting for. She's so patiently waiting for this guy. Why can't you just propose? <laughs> anyway, yeah, he's so much fun. Oh, is that what we're talking about? Patience? Yes. Come on, not my patients in the hospital. We are talking about... Yeah, I thought we were becoming a medical show. <laughs> okay. We're not yet. We will eventually, right? Eventually. But, of course, tonight we're going to talk about patience. Paghihintay. In, to our Filipino viewers, you know, pagchachaga. You know, sabi nga nila, di ba? Pag may chaga, may nilaga. But let's let's define patience first. You know, patience is pretty much like the ability to accept delay, which means it's about time, right? Accept suffering, paghihirap. <laughs> accept mm -hmm. annoyance, like but uh, what's annoyance? Irita, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah pagi... I always hear that about me. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're not. Without complaining. Or becoming angry. Oh my God, is that that's kind of hard to do, don't you think, Christian? Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. Like I've had yeah. a lot of experiences where I lost this. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you often hear people say, "I'm losing it," right? I'm mm -hmm. losing my patience. Yeah, I see a question. Uh, huh? Did you both pass the marshmallow test? Have you heard of this before? No, I haven't. What is that? If, you, uh, if you've seen videos like on online or like in uh, National Geographic or Discovery where they like test kids where like uh, there's like, going to be like a table mm -hmm. and the kid is sitting like behind it and uh, the adult will put like some marshmallow in front of the kid mm -hmm. and then we'll tell the kid, hey, don't don't touch this uh, marshmallow like while I'm gone, right? Oh. And then uh, the adult leaves the room and then there's kind of like hidden cameras and then they see if the kid will like get the mar marshmallow when no one's watching. Okay, so it's like testing their... Yeah, so it's like the... <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. Do you think you'd pass? Do you think do you have experiences when you were young where you definitely failed it or you definitely knew you could pass this? I I think I can. I honestly do. Cuz you know I am a, I, I am a very patient person. I mean, and I follow instructions. I'm a good follower. What you tell me, I do it. And I'm not kidding, Christian. I could if somebody, especially an adult, tells me an instruction or tells me to not to or to do this, I would do it or I would not do it. Wow. Yeah, I don't know what I, I I'm the complete opposite. I would definitely <laughs> eat the marshmallow. And I would tell them, I would tell the adults that it was you who ate the marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> so sabi ko nila sa Tagalog, pilyo ka pala. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, there's a comment here from Eileen. Can you share a time when being patient helped you and what good things came out of it? What do you think? You want to go first? Well, for me, I think I would say that the biggest thing I think that really made my life turn around 360 degrees that I patiently waited was coming to the United States. And let me tell you why. You know, I was helped by my relatives to, you know, to take up my nursing and all that. And during that time, the United States actually closed down hiring nurses from not just the Philippines, but other parts of the world. So it's like, wow, the reason I I took up nursing was for me to be able to go to the United States so I can help my family, right? So uh, eventually I got married. I was still in the Philippines, but I did not give up on my dream of coming to the U.S. so I can help my family. So lo and behold, after so many years of waiting, I had I gave birth to EJ, I gave birth to Xavier, and then I took on different jobs. I worked at Manila Medical Center, I worked at Medical City, and then I also worked in a life insurance company. But I did not give up on that dream. I still had the hope of coming to the U.S., so I still patiently waited for that opportunity. And thank God, that came year 2003, where the United States opened up again. And the best thing about this opportunity, you know, they opened up for nurses to become actually immigrants right away. Because prior to that, it was more like a, on a work permit or a work working visa. But during our time, I think I was one of the first batches of nurses from the Philippines that actually got a, an immigrant visa from the United States. And it was not just for me, but for my whole family. So we all got the immigrant visa at the same time. So see if you wait and don't give up on the things that you really desire for, it will come unexpectedly and even in better and bigger ways. And that's what happened. So that was the biggest turnaround of my life because because of that, I was able to bring my family with me because it's hard. You go to another country and just by yourself and you leave your family behind. I mean, that would be the hardest part for me. But thank God I was able to bring my family with me. And now here I am. I'm very grateful. And yes, patience, patience, patience. It can build your character. It can build your perseverance. It can give you what bigger blessings if you just wait. Because God has his perfect time for everything. So tonight, we are actually talking about a very, very interesting topic. It's very timely, of course. About? Yeah, we're going to talk about... What are we talking about? Christmas. 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 A Christmas tradition? Yes. Yes. Christmas traditions from all over the world. Which yeah. is interesting because, you know, not everyone, like, not everyone in the world is, like, Catholic or Christian. Mm -hmm. But they, like, they, they still celebrate something this season, which mm -hmm. is, like, very interesting. So. Yes, yes, of course, of course. But before we talk about other countries... We mm -hmm. can talk about how the Philippines, how, oh. well, how do we celebrate Christmas? Well, well, one thing interesting, though, that it's worth mentioning, mm -hmm. 
we are known to celebrate Christmas the longest. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yes. Yeah. When do we start? <laughs> September. September. Yes, that's correct. We start celebrating Christmas when the months, is, you know, the Burr months. Come. Yeah, we call them the Burr months. <laughs> the Burr months. Not so. because it's cold like Burr, but because the months <laughs> end in Burr. September, October, November, yes. December, and even till January. You do. Like, yeah. you know, three kings. Because we all, like, wait for that. Mm-hmm. For some reason, I grew up like, yeah, it's like everybody is so excited. Yeah. And then as you grow up, you learn the reason why we celebrate Christmas, mm-hmm. and it becomes more meaningful. Yeah. And yeah. also, like... I guess September, it starts getting cold, right? It's the rainy mm-hmm. season starts getting mm-hmm. cold. We don't have snow. We have rain. We have torrential rain. Mm-hmm. And sometimes there's like a, like rain like so hard that mm-hmm. like there's flooding, there's disasters. And then, you know, we just look for, look at, for Christmas, like for hope. Mm-hmm. And just so we could have something to celebrate and, and remember, remember that we, we're going to be okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. And then as, as kids, it's like, when Christmas is coming, it's like, oh, like you're expecting something. No matter how little they are, mm, like gifts, you know. that. Yeah. And then caroling. Christmas yes. caroling. Oh, my gosh. Did I, you, you used to go house to house, to house and sing? I did. I did. And then we, we went with friends. I went mm. with friends and my brothers and sisters. And it's so funny because, like, you you get this coins, bag of coins. Yeah. And then at the oh, end yeah. of the caroling, like, you try to split it. <laughs> And it's so heavy. Yes. And it's like the instruments kids use are like pin cans. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> makeshift instruments, makeshift like tambourines. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's the most like memorable yeah. time of being a kid and during Christmas season, like mm-hmm. Christmas caroling. The here in the United States, you know, my kids grew up here, but they rarely experience that. Mm. Like going house to house to do some caroling. Yeah. There are some like, even sometimes the adult like mm-hmm. there are like yeah yeah that they Christmas order, carolers yeah, yeah yeah Christmas carolers and then they said they give you like a letter mm-hmm. can we come on this day or they schedule you yeah and but, they usually mm-hmm. like fundraise for the church or like an organization but for us it's like the money actually goes to the kids yes <laughs> and yes they could buy like candy that's a difference from here yeah because back in the Philippines I mean. Christmas caroling is really for the kids. Mm-hmm. And then that's the time where kids get to experience the joy of, yeah. you know, like singing together mm. with their group of friends or their brothers and, and sisters dancing. and dancing. And and everybody expects that. That's how it is. I feel like you're yeah, like mentioning kids because like the, the baby Jesus is very important to us mm-hmm. too. So I guess mm-hmm. like the whole season is about like kids. and, and babies. Yes, that's right. That's right. And then one thing too that's, tradition in the philippines mm-hmm. i think is the um simbang gabi oh yeah yes. did you go used to go well when i was a kid yeah. and when i you know i was still a catholic mm-hmm. but so yeah. to those who don't know simbang gabi is like a the, uh, morning mass like like mm-hmm. directly Midnight. translates <laughs> to like a night mass like gabi is night mm-hmm. but in the philippines it's usually like a morning mass like 3 a.m or mm-hmm. 4 a.m Mm-hmm. Uh, they started it like for farmers so they could go to church mm-hmm. and then uh, go to the farms after and then everyone just adapted it. But mm-hmm. they say if you complete the nine days of Simbangabi, you get a wish and it comes true. I never completed it because I would wake up like late. <laughs> but I still went because like uh, the vibe is like, like mm-hmm. really nice and like mm-hmm. everyone's in there just woke up. Yeah. And uh, it's like everyone's friendly because, you know, everyone like really feels Christmas. Yeah, it's like I can feel like those memories coming back now. Oh, mm-hmm. my God, I can deja vu almost yeah. like you can actually feel it because, yeah, I remember waking up really, really early in the morning and you just go with your family and everybody goes to church because, yeah. I mean, the Philippines is a mainly a Catholic mm-hmm. country. You know, dominantly, yeah, yeah, dominantly Catholic. So, yeah, that is very, very common in our country. Now, I'm, 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 I'm still a Christian, but mm-hmm. um, we have other traditions now. Mm-hmm. But definitely, that is one of the biggest in the Philippines. Yeah, the Simbangabi, and, and then the Putubongbo. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> that's why I go. 
<laughs> so when I go home, let's put the bonbon, let's <laughs> And I usually go alone, so I get to eat like a whole thing. Oh. I eat it while it's fresh, and then my yes. family just, you know, yes. gets to it when they wake up. But yeah, yeah. put bonbon is like, it's um it's rice sticky cake, right? right? Yeah, rice cake that's inside a bamboo. Yeah. Right? Inside like a... They yeah, cook they it cook in, it in it a bamboo, yeah, it's bamboo. very sticky, <laughs> they put like coconut on it, uh-huh. and then brown sugar. Yes, mm. yes. I'm oh, ready. Wait. I'm oh, ready. Wait. Japan, we'll see what's next. Oh. St. Nicholas's Day in yeah. Germany. In Germany, St. Nicholas is entirely different from Santa Claus. Ooh, mm. Interesting. Over there, St. Nick is a separate gift giver that nods to the religious versions of Santa and leaves small presents such as coins and food in the shoes of good German children on the night, uh, on the night of December 5th. But if they were naughty, children could wake up to find sticks or twigs or switches in their shoes instead. What? Oh, I, I don't know what switches are, but it's interesting that it's in December 5. Yeah, not December 25. Yeah. I, do, I wonder if they have like two Christmases, like one for St. Nicholas. Because they say yeah, it's, it's, it's different from Santa Claus or if they, it's a separate gift giver. Mm-hmm. So I guess there's yeah, another maybe. gift giver. Yeah, yeah. So maybe they all still believe in Santa or those kids. But Did on the picture, they Santa look Claus? alike. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Because uh, it seems like even as a kid, like in the Philippines, uh-huh. I, I knew my parents were giving them to me, but also like uh, I don't not, I, I still believe in Santa Claus. Yeah. I just think that they maybe they're just giving it to my parents so it wouldn't be a hassle <laughs> going cuz like in the Philippines and having like a parent like abroad. Uh-huh. You know it's hard to travel. You know it's hard to travel like from one country to another and you don't expect someone to travel all over the world. That's right. That's right. Yeah, but we still did believe, right? Mm. We put socks. I'm not yeah. kidding and we were always like wanting apple cuz like it's 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 rare that you get apple. The, yeah, apple in our oh, socks. I didn't get that. Yeah. No, so we had relatives from the United States too that were like giving us some presents during Christmas because mm. they usually come during Christmas time. But I remember, I mean, even though life was hard back then, mm-hmm. but I remember receiving some apple in my like in my Christmas socks during Christmas wow. when I was Did you a eat kid. the apple? Of course, of course. Do you yeah. use the socks? <laughs> I live like in, in uh-huh. Cavite, in Cavite, Cavite, so it's like the birthplace of independence. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Emily Aguinaldo's mm-hmm. house, there's like a big like park in there. Yeah. That park is going to be full of people. Sometimes there's like a, uh, what's, what's period, like a circus. Mm-hmm. So they're going to be in town and like, yeah, it's fun. A lot of people are in there and it's just mm-hmm. lots of food, yes. lots of street food and seasonal food. So, uh-huh. yeah. Oh my, yeah. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> Christian, I can't wait, but that's very true. I mean, when you're growing up as a kid, you are you have simple wishes, right? Yeah. And anything that can make you happy can mm-hmm. just give that joy because that's how innocent kids are. So growing up like that, I wanted to be able to pay it forward. Mm-hmm. Like, for Hi, the, how do you, yeah, that's why I try to give whenever I can. You sponsor like events and stuff. You give gifts to like. Yes, yes, and I've I've had these kids. Um, I think I've sponsored maybe three or four Filipino kids wow. through an organization. Ever since I stepped foot in the United States, I made myself a promise that I'm gonna do my best, no matter how small. It doesn't have to mm-hmm. be big to help other people and pay it forward because I was a recipient of people's kindness. Mm. So uh, so we're like also like celebrating their life and like Yes, you know. yes, absolutely. It's just that time of the year where you really just want to be with family, mm-hmm. your friends. I mean build beautiful memories together and strengthen your relationships what i used yeah. to feel bad uh for is like when i spend time with my friends and not with my family but mm-hmm. with christmas like everyone like mm-hmm. my friends are also with family mm-hmm. so it's not it's it, not like yeah. there's some 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 people like trying to like uh, grab your attention or anything mm-hmm. right like yeah everyone understands that like it's family day yeah it's family time and the most important is family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
we wouldn't be here <laughs> if not <laughs> literally if not, literally, <laughs> if not for our families right so let's celebrate christmas yeah. with our families let's enjoy each other let's just love each other mm -hmm. i mean and create memories that will stay and that whenever we're gone in this world people will remember those memories you know like other memories they remember or like not just like on christmas or mm -hmm. or occasions it's like after the party's over you're all just like hanging out mm -hmm. in like your couches or whatever mm -hmm. and just talking just yeah. like reminiscing like mm -hmm. your like the past and like talking about some old friends mm -hmm. talking about oh, hey what happened to this guy from your high school what happened to this person your old friend and just no. like remembering everything. That's right. Yeah. I can't wait to really have that reunion because definitely it's like it's so funny because we have like our salutatorian. His name is mm. Joy. It's like there was a time in our group chat. It's like do we gotta have uh, a competition for like crop top competition? Oh, no. <laughs> no, I thought I, you I were gonna say one. like no, they were gonna get the, a speech. No, <laughs> I was the one that actually said we're gonna have a crop top competition. I'm exempted from I'm that. I'm gonna join that. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be one of the judges. I'm not gonna wear crop top. But anyway, we're gonna have so much fun. Mm. We're gonna have so much fun, and it's good to see your friends like from from many years ago. Yeah. Yeah, I know we all have families, we all have kids, may, we may have grown bigger. <laughs> Even my some friends have families. Yeah, from some of us may have grown bigger, but it's it's always going to be that time where like, you just want to enjoy it, yeah. each other. And like, yeah. since all families are traveling like with each other too, mm -hmm. you get to meet like your kids' friends, mm -hmm. like this, like people from high school where mm -hmm. like they have families now you which you haven't met yet like even mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. i i'm i'm not like super young but like when i think about that oh some of my best friends have kids now it's mm -hmm. like shocking it's me. your time <laughs> <laughs> or you're they were next. early <laughs> yeah you christian you're not getting any I younger know, but i'm also not getting any richer <laughs> yeah well you don't have to be rich to right, have a we'll family charge it to the card yeah, no, no, but you don't have to be rich to to have a Me family. And MJ, thank you. Yeah, sure. For sponsoring. Oh, I, I, sure, I'll be. <laughs> Anyways, folks, hope you are enjoying, and hope we are spreading, you know, this uh, important message to everyone that even it's even if it's not Christmas, that mm -hmm. let's just create beautiful memories, because those memories are like priceless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your loved ones will always remember them. And it makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. it